We now have a ton of information about Starfield, including this like 45 minute gameplay deep dive video. I'll have all my sources today linked in the video description so you uh, can be sure to check them out. But we also have system requirements for the PC, but uh, some other information you may be interested in as well. You know, let me pause this video in the background while we switch tabs here. Um, we have some questions about how is it gonna run on consoles. So Todd Howard has confirmed the game runs at 30 FPS on consoles. There is not a 60 FPS mode. And often that can mean that the game is gonna be very demanding on the PC side as well. Now with that being said, um, that's targeting 4K, uh, sorry, 4K 30 FPS. I think we got the details buried in here somewhere. So it's targeting 4K 30 on the Series X and 1440p theory, uh, 30, geez, <laughs> on the Series S. They say we do lock it at 30 because we want that fidelity. We want all that stuff. We do not want to sacrifice any of it. So he's saying it's a uh, looking for consistency and pushing the detail. It was a creative decision that they wanted to make. Apparently there's headroom in certain parts of the game, um, but because so much can happen in Starfield, uh, they wanted that consistent experience. They claim it feels great. Um, you know, I, I wish there was a higher frame rate option, but that's the console side of things. But again, keep that in mind when we look at the PC requirements. Uh, they're also on the plus side saying that they've had a lot of time to crush bugs, so this should have fewer bugs than any Bethesda game to date, uh, which, <laughs> um, well, Bethesda games are known for having a lot of bugs. So anyway, this should at least be better than that. But they said that the game was originally supposed to launch a lot earlier pre-Microsoft acquisition, but Microsoft has encouraged them to take their time and polish, 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 polish. So anyway, let's get into the system requirements. Okay, um, right. what we have right now is basically the Steam page got updated with system requirements. We don't have one of those massive charts uh, that a lot of game developers do. If they do publish one of those giant charts, I will do a follow-up video and check the pinned comments if you're watching this video in the future, and I will pin a comment with the follow-up video uh, if that ends up happening. But for now, there's already a couple of things that really, really stand out to me. Number one, SSD required even on the minimum. So right now we have minimum and we have recommended, that's it. SSD says required. A lot of games right now on the minimum list SSD recommended, and then under recommended specs say SSD, this is specifically saying SSD required. Now, I don't know if that means that this uh, really won't actually run on a hard disk drive, but it's certainly listed as required, and 125 gigabytes of available space. So for those of you who have maybe an SSD boot drive, and then you install a lot of your games on a, uh, a slower hard disk drive, I think uh, this could be a game where that could present some issues. You will need 125 gigabytes of SSD space to install the game. I'm also noticing 16 gigabytes of RAM listed for both minimum and recommended. And that's not too crazy or anything, but um, just if you are on a minimum spec system here, make sure you have that 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now we can talk more about the CPUs in a bit, but let's start with the GPUs because I'm noticing a couple of interesting things here, especially on the recommended GPUs, where they're pairing an RX 6800 XT, which for one thing is a very powerful GPU. And for another thing, they're putting it up against an RTX 2080. The 6800 XT is generally a lot more powerful than a 2080. So what could possibly explain that? Well, one thing that could explain it is sometimes system requirements charts are just nonsense. So do keep that in mind as we, as we do this whole thing. Um, but second of all, it could be uh, ray tracing involved. It's the, the one thing about these system requirements list is that they do not state the resolution or graphic settings or frame rate that these are targeting. I have some thoughts on that, but one thing that could explain a 6800 XT against a 2080 uh, when it's actually more in, uh, on uh, non-ray trace performance closer to a 3080, which is a lot more powerful than a 2080, um, could it be that there's a ray tracing involved in the game? Well, way back on October 7th of 2022, I could find an article talking about Starfield to feature RTX integration on PC, but it just as a rumor. And I scoured all of the latest information and I could not find any confirmation of uh, ray tracing technology 
uh, in this game. So at this point, all I can say is there were rumors based on a, uh, I think it was like a LinkedIn profile uh, for one of the game developers talking about um, RTX integration into the game, but not specifying what that could mean. Is it just DLSS? Is it actual ray tracing? If so, how much? All of that. So that's my thoughts on why they might be pairing a 6800 XT with the 2080. Now, what about the minimum requirements? So while a RX 5700 from AMD and a GeForce 1070 Ti aren't crazy powerful GPUs in this day and age, they are a bit higher than what we've seen for a lot of games minimum requirements. Now, could that mean that the minimums are targeting 60 frames per second? I don't think so because the consoles are targeting 30 frames per second. This is one of the reasons why I brought this up. So I'm a little concerned that this minimum could be like 1080p 30 frames per second or even 720p low 30 frames per second. And on this class of GPU, that could be a concern. Let's look into how the GPU scaling goes from the uh, minimum up to the recommended GPUs though. So I'm gonna pull up um, the Tech Power Up GPU database. This gives us a lot of detail about the GPUs. First of all, the minimum listed GPUs are eight gigabyte graphics cards, although so is the 2080, which is the recommended GPU, although the 6800 XT does go up to um, uh, 16 gigabytes. So anyway, notice that they, they didn't specify how much VRAM is needed, but VRAM has been a big talking point lately. These are eight gigabyte cards. Well, it could just be their power level that they're looking for. Um, also, one nice thing about the Tech Power Up GPU database, and um, I will link this in the description, is that it has a relative performance chart. So we can click on the 1070 Ti, and you'd be like, well, I have a 1070, how much weaker the, uh, uh, is that, right? That kind of a thing. Or I have a 1660 Ti, uh, how close does that get me? So the other thing I'll mention though is this relative performance chart is not perfect, um, and it also does not um, you know, reflect the exact performance of a particular game, because certain games, or certain graphics engines, uh, all of that will favor one GPU architecture more than another, and this is just giving you a ballpark idea. So with all of those caveats aside, the 1070 Ti is actually a little bit more powerful uh, than an RTX 3050. Um, and again, uh, which is also a little bit, uh, you know, about on par with something like a GTX 1070. So basically, if you have something like a 3050 or a 1070 or a 1660 Ti, a 1660 Super, cards like those, uh, you are actually below the minimum spec uh, for this game. And there's a lot of people still on cards more like a, you know, a, a 1060. Well, that's only reaching 66% of the performance of the 1070 Ti. So if the 1070 Ti is targeting 60 frames per second, maybe you're fine. But if those minimum specs are for 30 frames per second, um, and if we're already down at something like low settings, I think people on like a 1060 could be in trouble. You know, popular cards like the 480, uh, GTX 970. In other words, um, based, uh, you know, if you're on a 1650, which is very popular, that is half the performance of the minimum GPU listed uh, list on these specs. Now they also listed the uh, RX 5700. Uh, which is generally a bit more powerful than the 1070 Ti, but these ones aren't so far apart uh, that that seems ridiculous. They're within about 10% on this chart. And again, the chart's not perfect. So if you have something like a 2060, a GTX 1080, uh, Vega 64, you're, you're in this general bar ballpark of the minimum spec GPUs, which again, it doesn't tell us what frame rate and resolution and graphic settings that's targeting. If it is 1080p or 720p low 30 frames per second, I think a lot of people could be in trouble here. Now, are we jumping up to the recommended with the 6800 XT and the 2080? Well, let's let's scroll along here. So as we scroll down this list, you'll start to see cards that are more powerful than the minimum. So maybe you'll find yourself on this list. So, uh, you know, is your 3060 is a bit more powerful, has more VRAM, all of that. Um, so as we scroll down here, here we get to the RTX 2080, which is 44% or so more powerful than the minimum listed GPU, which uh, brings me to some questions. One is, are we going from, uh, you know, 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, because then that's only a 44% jump, so that's, that, that's a little bit weird. Uh, or are we staying at the same frame rate, but just increasing graphic settings from low to medium, or low to high, or low to ultra, something like that. Uh, that could also explain that jump, but again, this chart doesn't give us enough to be sure. But then we've got the 6800 XT here, 
uh, and the 6800 XT uh, is actually significantly more powerful than that. So again, the jump from 1070 Ti to 2080, about 44%, if I now set the 2080 as the baseline and scroll up, uh, we actually go quite a ways to get to the 6800 XT, which is 57% more powerful than that 2080. So something just seems wrong here, unless it's ray tracing, like I said, because the 2080 and the 6800 XT would be closer in performance in terms of heavy ray tracing workloads. But the 6800 XT should be significantly more powerful than the 2080 um, in just normal gameplay. And we didn't see that wide of a gap between AMD and Nvidia on their minimum requirements. No, is it also possible that this the system requirements here are just nonsense and they're they we're just, you know, <laughs> they just, they're just bad. They, they don't, uh, <laughs> it could just be nonsense. I don't know, maybe these are just some PCs they tested it on. They're like, yeah, works, recommended. Anyway, we should talk about the CPUs before we go though, because if this is targeting like 30 FPS on the CPUs, these are asking for some reasonably powerful CPUs just to get to that point. Uh, one thing I'll mention is that the, um, the CPUs they're recommending are all at least six core. Uh, so if you're still back on an old four core, we, it's possible you'd run into some issues. The Ryzen 5 2600X is a six core 12 thread CPU uh, from uh, 2018, so you know, not the oldest in the world, but also not not the newest or asking for anything too crazy. And the min and that's but this is the minimum. That's the only thing that concerns me here is is as a minimum, uh, what kind of performance level is it getting you? It'll run the game, but uh, will it get you 60 frames per second? And we've got the Intel Core i7 6800K as another six core 12 thread uh, CPU. Uh, this one from 2016, so a little bit older, but back in these generations, Intel generally had better gaming performance per core. Um, so there's that. Now, when we jump up to the recommended specs, we're jumping from the Ryzen 5 2600 to the 3600. Uh, so still six core 12 thread, but we're just the next generation. This one coming out in 2019. Uh, compared to our minimum spec, and then with the uh, i5-10600K, we're jumping a few generations. Uh, this one is uh, still six core 12 thread, but much, much newer. The 10600K is actually a 2020 chip. So those are the CPUs. Again, I don't know what to say about those other than um, what frame rate are they targeting? Because here's, again, coming back to my final thoughts, with the 30 FPS lock on consoles, in a lot of games we've seen that happen in, it's because the CPUs are struggling. Now, a lot of times that's been in Unreal Engine 4 games, and this is their own, this is not Unreal Engine 4, this is, you know, Bethesda's own engine. Um, but anyway, I do want to mention that though, because uh, <laughs> if these are only targeting 30 frames per second on these CPUs, this could be another one of those games where even on a powerful PC, you have trouble reaching high frame rates because the GPUs go underutilized. Uh, because the CPUs struggle. I wonder if we're gonna see that here. It's just some speculation. I don't know for sure. Uh, last thing I'll mention is that the game should launch on uh, September 6th. And uh, this should, because it is now a Microsoft uh, exclusive title, this should be a Game Pass PC uh, uh, available game. So um, could be one of the uh, easiest ways to get in and test it out uh, without investing a bunch in the full game. Um, although I do think that some of the game bundles might have offered like early access to play or something like that. Uh, they talked a bit about pre-orders. I don't have that info pulled up right here for you. What do you guys think about all this? Like I said, if we get a more detailed um, system requirement list, one of you know the big charts that actually give us the resolution, the frame rate, uh, all of that broken down in a lot more detail like most modern games have been doing, maybe we'll get one closer to launch. Uh, then I will do a follow-up video and pin it in the comments. Huge thank you to channel subscribers. Huge thank you to viewers and channel members. Can't believe you guys hit the join button to directly support the channel financially. Uh, that is just amazing to me, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.